show you the picture first in the book. So this is the image. You can see it. Okay. It's called the photographer, the photographer's dream. So let me read you this story. I was born an army brat, a term used to describe children of military parents who relocate every few years for work. It meant making new friends quickly and seeing the world from a global perspective. Growing up in Japan and Greece, the ocean was my home. My favorite beach was complete with manta rays. I would ride on and one time, a Portuguese man of war that almost killed me. Oh, yeah, those man of wars, you got to watch out for those. My family retired to Gainesville, Florida. My father created an insurance company. I went from high school to the University of Florida. My grades were bad, but my job for the independent Florida alligator was spectacular. I photographed the presidential campaigns of Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, all the football and basketball games, and the launch of the first space shuttle for the United States International. I won lots of awards, graduated with a degree in political science, and decided I wanted to either become Jacques Cousteau, it's so funny because I wanted to do that too, or a photographer for National Geographic. I had applied for internship program at National Geographic, and out of 6,000 applicants, I still thought I had a chance. The letter arrived, and it read, thank you for your application. You placed third in our search. Unfortunately, this year, due to budget cuts, we are only able to have two interns. I was heartbroken as it was my senior year. I didn't have a second chance. Fortunately, my two other choices, the Minnesota Tribune and the Miami Herald, both made offers. Accepting the Miami Herald led to a 15-year career, the first day of which was photographing the McDuffie riots in Overtown. The last days were being a part of the Pulitzer Prize winning team covering Hurricane Andrew. I even dove with Mel Fisher the day he found the Atocha worth billions of dollars and located the first chest of silver coins in the wreck. I met the love of my life, a writer for the Miami Herald, and we had two wonderful children together. 24 years into marriage, she took a job in New York City, and I stayed behind to see the children off, sell our two houses, and earn a Master of Fine Arts degree so I could teach at a university level in New York. After a lengthy job search, I landed a job on Friday. Sunday brunch was met with, I don't want you to move up here. The divorce was final at the 27-year mark. To say I was in shock would be an understatement. Until this day, I don't fully understand her declaration. I just like living alone more than living with you. Thank God I had a wonderful job as a professor where I could pay forward the universe and the good karma life had bestowed on me. I also knew that the unconditional love of my children had ultimately worked to get me through the hard times. After all, the phases of loss, denial, isolation, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, were familiar to me, having lost both my parents and a few years leading up to divorce. My sister-in-law had lived with me for a year after the divorce, along with my daughter. She and I compared notes from her divorce and talked about the dating world nightly. It was odd but comforting to find how to date. The last time I had dated, there was no internet and certainly no cell phones. A month after she moved out, she was diagnosed with cancer and died within two months. Watching her die, surrounded by her two teenage children and family, I grieved again and imagined being alone. This is the headspace I was in when I came to Melissa and her postcards to the universe workshop. To be honest, I saw her photo on Facebook and thought she was very pretty. Oh, thank you. I thought I'll go and meet her or that I might meet someone else who was in a similar space in life. When asked to make a postcard of my aspirations, I almost cried thinking about the scuba diver I used to be. Achieving a thousand dives by the age of 21, I only dove four times during my 27-year marriage and wanted more than anything to be an adventurer and photographer for National Geographic. I had set aside my children, my childhood dreams for a life I truly was blessed to have. And now I had a chance to pick up again. The next summer I taught in Kazan, Russia, in a Broward, Broward College initiative to bring our educational standards to Russia. This summer I taught in Shanghai, China, doing the same thing, followed by 30 days of scuba diving on board a ship around Komodo Island, living on a private diving island called 
Wakatobi, finally diving the last days in Bali, where I experienced a seven point a seven point zero earthquake and the Renaissance moment of my life. I decided to post some of the photos to National Geographic's Your Shot and have had a half a dozen mentions by the editors about the quality of my work. I'm in the process of getting an assignment with the magazine and starting over down the path of adventure I strayed from so many years ago. I've also met a few beautiful women whose presence in my life has been symbiotic, wonderful, and enriching for each of us. Many remain my friends, and we all have become better because of our relationship. I remain true to myself. I have given love without condition. I have left everyone in my wake better off for having known me. And I am grateful to be a truly blessed man, Rick. Yeah, he's a wonderful photographer, by the way. Um, So check out his story, you know, in my book. And here's his photo again. And yeah, it, uh, it was really a pleasure. That's how we met and we became friends. He came to one of my workshops and, um, I love that he contributed to this book. It means the world to me. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed his story and keep coming back and you can go back and listen to the previous stories. And of course, I have more for you. All right. Until next time. Bye.